Hello and welcome. In this video, I will demonstrate how to spin up EKS cluster in auto mode using Terraform. I will also explain the reasons why I recommend EKS auto mode rather than spinning up your own EKS cluster. All the configuration files discussed in this video are available at my blog site as well as on my GitHub repo. Check the comment section for the links. Why use Amazon EKS mode? And what do they mean by Amazon manages the compute storage, networking, auto scaling, etc.? To understand that, you need to look at the EKS cluster without the auto mode. In a normal EKS cluster, there are some limitations on how many number of IP addresses that can be assigned to a node that restricts the number of ports that can be installed. So Amazon provides an add-on called VPC CNI for that. For the load balancer, it can only work with the node port. So Amazon provides load balancer controller for that, which will enable the traffic to be forwarded direct to the port. And then there is EKS port identity. Then there is additional add-on for using the block storage. All of these are provided as EKS add-ons, and you have to install it once you install the EKS cluster. And also it can be very challenging maintaining the versions of all of these add-ons. And when you are doing upgrade of EKS, you need to make sure all of these add-ons are compatible with your new version of EKS and there is a compatibility between the plugins as well. This can be very time consuming. That is where the EKS Auto is coming in. With the EKS Auto, Amazon will take care of all of these standard plugins. When you spin up an EKS cluster, VPC CNI, load balancer controller, pod identity, cube proxy, and ingress controller, Carpenter Auto scalers are already installed and managed by the AWS itself. So when you're doing the upgrades, you don't need to worry about the add-ons. Amazon will take care of all the add-on versions. Let us get started with the requirements for creating a EKS auto cluster. To start with, you need two subnets in a single region with necessary IPs, minimum six IPs per subnets. If you look at the configuration files, in the vpc.tf, you can see I am defining in two subnets and I would define private subnet as well as public subnet. It's always a good idea to have a private subnet and public subnet and deploy your host to the private subnets. You need the public subnet so that you can have an external facing load balancer. When you provision your nodes on the private subnet, you need to either provision a NAT gateway or you have to provide a mechanism for the nodes to reach internet for pulling images and other activities. Here I'm using a single NAT gateway. And next thing is to have the tags for your subnets. For the public subnet and for private subnet, you need a specific tags for load balancer controller to create the load balance. For the public subnet, for creating external facing load balancers, you must have a tag for ELB equal to one, and for the private subnet, you need to have a tag internal ELB equal to one. Once you have created the VPC, you need to define some IAM roles for the EKS cluster. There are two IAM roles required for this particular job. One for the EKS cluster. The second role is a node role that will be used by the carpenter to provision the node. So here you can see the IAM role for the node you can creating and is providing a STS assume role for ec tutor Amazon AWS.com. And we are attaching node worker node policy as well as container registry policy if you are planning to use the container registry. That is all the configuration you need for the IAM role for the node. The next step is to create a role IAM role for EKS cluster. So this will be the role EKS cluster will be using for provisioning your services, your add-ons, etc. I'm creating a role called EKS cluster EKS auto demo and assigning the assume role permission eks.amazon.com. Then I'm assigning additional policies, EKS cluster policy, compute policy for spinning up the EC2 instances and EBS block storage policies. This is required for the EBS CSI drivers for provisioning the storage and load balancer policy for spinning up the load balancers and networking policy for VPC CNI. Once IAM role is defined and created, we can move on to creating the EKS cluster itself. The 
Terraform AWS EKS resource is same as the normal EKS cluster, but there are some differences. In this one, I'm using EKS cluster and providing a name and access config is default to API. Role ARN specify the IAM role that this cluster should be using, the version of the EKS cluster. In the auto mode, you must enable the compute config, Kubernetes network config, and storage config. All these must be enabled for the auto mode to work. In the compute config, we specify the IAM role we created for the node. In the VPC config, you can enable the private access endpoint or a public access endpoint. Here, I'm enabling both endpoints. Ideally, you should only enable the private access. I also specify the subnet IDs and IAM roles and policies are provided as a dependency. All of these Terraform configuration files are available in my GitHub repo, and the links are available in the comment section. When you create a EKS cluster with API authentication mode, creator will not have access to the EKS cluster itself. I'm configuring an access entry for the creator itself. I'm using a data source AWS caller identity current to identify what, which, what is the current user and creating an access entry for that particular user. I'm also attaching I am EKS cluster admin policy to that user so that when you create the cluster, that same user will have full access to the EKS cluster administration. Okay, I'm already in the folder with all the configuration file and I already initialized the Terraform configuration. I'm going ahead and applying the configuration because I already tested the plan. I will post the video and uh, resume once the EKS cluster is ready. Okay, Terraform now completed the job and my EKS cluster is ready. Let's go ahead and connect to the EKS cluster. I will update my cube config using AWS CLI and check the cluster info. So as you can see, my configuration is updated. I'm able to connect to the cluster. Let's investigate the cluster configuration first. I'm using KNINS. First of all, when you created a new EKS cluster in auto mode, there, is, there will be no ports. Any add-ons installed by the AWS are either installed as a program directly baked into the image itself, which is Bottle Rocket, or it is hidden from us. So even if you go for the namespace cube system, you will see nothing. So let's have a look at the number of nodes. There are not, no nodes are provisioned. So everything is in control plane and there are no nodes provisioned by default. Then Carpenter will provision a new node when you install an application. So Carpenter is already installed. Let's have a look at what is the node pool configuration available by default. So as you can see, there is a default node class. It's called general purpose. It's already configured by the AWS. And if you look at the configuration, some of the important parameters are, number one, here looking at expire after 336 hours. So that means, Every 14 days, the, your node will be terminated, a new one will be provisioned. So this ensures you're always running on an up-to-date hardware, and also it's always running up-to-date operating system and patches. In the capacity type, it is only configured for on-demand. If you like to spot, use spot instances, for example, you can create another node pool for it. So instance type is C, M, or R, and the generation of four. And this node pool is configured to provision AMD 64 architecture servers only. If you like to provision any other type, including ARM or GPUs, you can create your own node pools and make configuration changes. You cannot make changes to the default node pool provisioned by AWS. So next thing we can look at is the storage class. As you can see, AWS already provisioned a storage class called GP2. And that will provision standard GP2 volumes. This is non-encrypted volume. If you require an encrypted volume, I suggest you create a separate storage class. Let us take a look at the ingress class. So as you can see, there are no ingress classes defined by default. EKS auto provisions ingress controller configuration, not ingress class. If you like to make use of the default ingress configuration, you will have to create an ingress class for it. So let's go ahead and deploy an application. Here I have a very simple application running echo server 
two replicas on a namespace called echo server. It's requesting half CPU and memory of 16 MI. In this window, you can see the nodes on top. There are no nodes. And here are the list of ports. There are no ports available at the moment. I'm already in the folder, and I will go ahead and apply this configuration. I'll create the echo server configuration. So you can see it's deploying two ports, and however, it is in pending mode. So if you look at the reason why it's going to the description, you will see no nodes are available. So this will trigger Carpent Rotor Scaler to spin up a new node. So here, Carpent is spinning up a new node, and the new node is getting ready. So your node is provisioned, and your application is up and running. So let's look at what kind of node they provisioned. So if you look at the CPU type, this is C6A large. Now that your application is running, you need to make it available to the external world. So you need to create an ingress and expose it via load balancer. Let's have a look at the default ingress configuration available from EKS Auto Mode. So by default, you can see there are no ingress classes and there are no ingresses. So first of all, we'll go ahead and define an ingress parameter. It says scheme is internet facing, so, so that will create an internet facing load balancer in the public subnet. And I'm creating an ingress class called ALB. I will go ahead and apply this configuration. So as you can see, it's already created an ingress class, and that's ready. So now we are ready to create the ingress resource. Let's go back to our application, echo server. I have already defined a service and ingress in our configuration. So here there is a service pointing to the application. And here there is ingress class configuration, where I'm specifying the ingress class name as ALB. I'm not using the TLS section. And I'm providing a host name of echo.betum.pages.dev. So let's go ahead and apply this configuration and see how it goes. So the configuration is applied. And here you can see it's already created an ingress resource for the host we specified. And it's also provisioning a load balancer. Let us test our application. So let's check the ALB is resolving. So ALB is solving, so we can test our application. I will set the ALB URL variable and use the curl command to test it. So let's do a curl. Send a curl command to the load balancer passing my host header. So the application is working. Let's do it in a loop and a grip for the host name. So this application returns which port the response is coming from. We have two ports, and the traffic is load balanced between two ports. Let's take a look at the console, AWS console, and see what we can identify. Here we have our load balancer, and it does have two rules, and sending all the traffic to the target group it already created. And if you look at the target group, you can see two of them are healthy. And if you look at the configuration here, this is the IP address of the port. So the target group is sending traffic directly to the port. And this is why it is not ideal for us to use the default interest controller. Challenge with this configuration is that in Kubernetes, you may be doing upgrades or scaling up or scaling down operations. Kubernetes will spin up the ports within seconds. And the load balancer will take longer time to recognize whether the port is active or not. Especially with the health check, if you look at it, there is a default health check of checking on the path slash. is checking every 15 seconds. And healthy threshold is 2. Also, unhealthy threshold is 2. So in other words, it will take at least 30 seconds for the load balancer to recognize a specific port is running or not, or active or not. So this is too slow for your Kubernetes activities. And there are some workaround which you can use for improving the situation, but not a 100% solution. That is where it is better to use a gateway API or ingress controller of your own, where you can 
provision and route the traffic to the ingress controller and the ingress controller will manage the traffic to the respective ports. That will also allow you to specify network load balancer and manage certificate at the ingress controller or gateway API controller level. Automation become much easier. Thank you and hope you find this video useful.